Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Chicago sports fans. This is Barstool Carl. And what's Sox Chief. Steve. I do. This is Redline Radio, an all guest, no break Chicago sports podcast brought to you by Barstool Sports Chicago. Uh, guys, absolute fucking chaotic week. I'm in the midst. I'm thinking, I'm like, man, I hope everybody's recovered. And before we even get to that, like, we're down a guy. We lost a guy. One of our guys is on indefinite suspension, and I don't know if, like, we feel right about it. Um, you're talking about Rico Bosco. I'm talking right? about Rico. Yeah, yeah. Like, we're down a guy. Um, yeah, tough situation, man. Tough situation. Yeah. Do you have any, like, I know you obviously did the Dave Portnoy show. I don't know yeah. if you followed up with Rico or if you got any firsthand. I actually from talked him. to him after. Yeah, he seems like he's taking it pretty hard, which is good. He needs, you know, he needed to learn a lesson. I mean, what he did was wrong. He can't do that. And uh, yeah, you just got to be better. Yeah, you so. can't. I don't know if you could throw a can. It was like ninety six. I know Dave. You're the velocity guy around here. He fucking hooked that thing. I mean, if that's if that's making contact with his face, if it doesn't hit broadside of the can, if it hits like one of the. One well, of the course. edges, one of the corners. He's breaking his nose, breaking his eye socket bone, his orbital bone or whatever, losing teeth, and that's a lawsuit for either against Barcelona or against Rico. Rico's out of a job. He's lucky he didn't have command of that fastball. <laughs> He's lucky. And I think it was a – I told Ed before the match, I think it was a complete cunt move out of Rico. I think he's got – issues that have been exasperated by the position he's in with Barstool. And I lost every ounce of respect I had for him after that, especially after what I heard is he started it with a little dig at him, like, oh, I'll just go around wearing orange, rooting for Southern schools or whatever. So, Rico, you better shape up because that was a complete bullshit move, and it made me sick to my stomach. It made me sick to my stomach. What about our snake drafts? I don't give a shit about the snake drafts. This is beyond snake drafts. I was like, that wasn't like he just backhanded it. That that can had bad thoughts in it. It was bad. He tried to hurt him. I don't want to. I don't like associating with people like that. So I'm out on Rico. Disavowed by Dave. He's gonna have to do something very publicly, not to me, to just like in general be like, yeah, I'm trying to shape up. Because that was just fucked up. Chief? Yeah, I mean, look, I like Rico, but inappropriate. Can't do it. Um, but, you know, people can be redeemed. But this, uh, I want a redemption arc for Rico. I hope he comes yeah, back absolutely. Like, uh, yeah. like Andy when he came back in the office, asked him to be called Drew. Like, I just want, like, a little tempered down version of Rico. It still has, like, the uh, guy who's funny. Rico's funny. Balls. He's good in, He's good in content. Yep. This this was too much for me. Like I like I said, I and this is on the heels. Like we did the rundown a few weeks back, and you guys all picked uh, Jersey Jerry to beat and do, and just for the sole fact of like just not making it unanimous, I picked to do. And Rico's like going off on me in text. I was like, Rico, I don't want any part of this fucking little shtick you got. Clearly, it's not shtick. It's beyond that. Done. Like that was absolutely. Beyond anything I personally want to associate with, if you guys want to have on snake drafts, if Rico doesn't want me on, I don't give a shit. Rico, you got to shape up. That's how I see it. So would you, if he was back as a guest, would you sit that draft out? No, I'd, I'd stay on it. Oh, if, sure. I mean, if he was going to be a baby about it, which I'm, I'm sure this is going to get back to him. But he's going to be redeemed. He's going to go to therapy. I mean, he's going to. He's learned his lesson. He's going to. He better. will see if he's learned his lesson. I, I believe. We'll I believe that he will learn his lesson. Okay. Just uh, no party guy. I'm sitting here like, man, I would love to drive fastballs with Rico tomorrow. To what? He's drive not ready. fastballs. He's no, not, that's enabling not, this he's not fucking ready. I know, bullshit, I know. cunt I, bag, I, I, fucked up behavior. That's that was so out of line. Like I was pissed off, and I'm not like necessarily friends with Big T or backing Big T up. That could have been anybody in no, the it's company. Right, it's right and wrong. It's, it's right, right Rico, and wrong. Rico like, dude, wrong. get the fuck out of my face with that shit. Can I say something, though? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like we've already talked about this for too long. Yeah. I, I got a lot I'm, on I'm my over mind. It. I got a I'm lot over, on I'm my over mind, it. and I just want to get to the Bears. Mm -hmm. so much, we, I mean, we can. I, I, we haven't talked, though, about – I mean, I, I we haven't talked at all, the four of us, mm -hmm. on our own channel about the bar. I just would be interested to know if you guys like it. Yeah, I like it. 
I liked yeah. it a lot. It was a great time. I, I mean, I would like to spin us out of some of this. I feel like Dave is in this very serious. No, I, I was because I was yeah, getting heated well, right I, there because this is like I said on the heels of him texting think, me, like kind of snapping on me for picking to do. He's like, "You're, uh, I'll see you next." He's like, "Have a good life." Like it's it's been real fun. Oh, like, I forgot about that. Yeah, and I'm like, "Get the Rico. I'm not doing this. Like, don't drag me into this like bullshit little you squeeze guys out thing." Because I'll fucking I I will not handle. You're it. unsqueezable. I I will handle this much differently than all those guys will. Like you want to go to war, I will fucking. You guys know you, I'm a grudge guy. You are. You love. And you I love would, a good internet war. I would fucking go right back. But White Sox um, Dave versus. But Rico, this is beyond. This isn't going to be a White Sox Dave versus Rico thing. This needs to be a Rico versus Rico thing because Rico needs serious help. That's all it boils down to for me. Like that was so fucked up and it deranged was, that I want. I do not associate with people like that. Do you think I, it can be redeemed? That's a fucking kettle or a, a powder keg ad. That's a. It's combustible. I like. Nice, and I, I want to get rid of in all the volatility. That's it. Bears. Cubs, We're going to be joined Cubs, in a little Bulls. bit by Olin Krutz. He's coming in studio to get his reaction to, obviously, the press conference and where the Bears are headed in the future. But I guess before we get to Olin Krutz, um, we do got some good news, though. It has officially been decided that Chief is 8% gay. <laughs> that is what the internet has decided. 8%. Yes. No gay, more, no less. gay picture. It was a gay picture. I feel like we could sell 8% gay merch. Yeah, with your face on it. We're like 8% face. can become like this thing. Like did you can rally around that 8% and be like, I'll, I'll take my 8%. Did you go out, out and about yet or no? No, I'm supposed to do that today. I did KFC radio yesterday. We'll see if we have time for out and about today. But yeah, I'd like I'd like gay Pat's opinion on that picture, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I mean uh, you don't need gay Pat or straight Pat or straight Dave or any. I mean, that's a gay picture. It yeah. looks like a homosexual no. couple. Not that there's anything wrong with that at all. That's just what it looks like. And I'm kind of tired of that storyline now, too. It, I'm, it's, it's like a You're going to get over it. I know. You I know. already are. I already no, am. No, 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 no. But like, this was good. Don't. Don't. No. Let no, that I be know. It, it, no, it was great. It was you great. now know how I feel when all my funny pictures get leaked and it's just beaten into but the ground. You, you're like, I yeah, am so but you're fucking doing, sick. You're of doing the deadpan face on oh, purpose. Oh, no, that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's way, way different. No, I'm talking I, I about like mean the like, fucking hair at the gum interview and shit like that. Well, yeah, but that was whatever. But like this, the thing I'm tired of is everybody thinking that they're making the joke the first mm-hmm. time. Every single person making the joke, the exact same it, joke right. over You're gonna and over be, and over people and are gonna over ask you, like, where's Ozzy for the rest of your life? Yeah. Yeah, it's annoying. It's already, it's like day four, and it's already annoying. Are you open to putting your hand on people's chests for pictures, or is that out, I, yeah, out I never thought, I think the hand, if it was like the hand and the face combined made it bad. Yeah. But like, and I was just like dapping them like that. And then it was. See, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, man. It's a hundred percent. The to picture check was the... snapped mid dap, like while the hand was making. Like, I, was, time. I had been talking to him for probably two minutes and like we were talking, we took one selfie and then passed the phone to, um, to somebody to be like, and, and she was like, oh, I'll take it. And then I passed the phone and that was the picture and i just tweeted that picture and it was just i mean now it's just somebody you 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 described you had a more specific descriptor for that somebody in the last time we talked about this on on the record i know but so is she doesn't like to okay that's fine that's fine that's fine what about i get that in any way we like can you give her a reaction does she find it funny yeah yeah she was all over it she thought it was the funniest thing in the world ground too yeah because like i like it got like Feidelberg replied to it, and I did not know. You that. were drunk. You weren't looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Like I and like I, I right. Yeah. And like I woke up the next day and I was like awake, but like not really. And then I was getting text from um, from KFC, and I was like, oh. "What the fuck?" Is yeah. This? And he's like, "This is the Been funniest thing." Dog. Yeah. And then I, like I'm looking at my phone, and it was like one of those things where you can't get back yeah. to the beginning of it. Yep. And then I finally like see Feidelberg yep. his had like 2,500 likes or retweets or whatever. And then I'm looking like, oh, fuck. And like then I was like, did somebody else post that? Like I went looking for like you guys because I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. Maybe you guys took uh-huh. it and put it out there. And then I was like, no, like I did it. I'm a fucking idiot. But see, what's the difference between sympathize Living and empathize again? Empathize is if you you have not been in that I've position. I've never been able to get that right. Sympathize is where you have been in that position, I believe. So I can sympathize with you fully because I've been in this yeah. position a million times where I wake up and, like, you got – it's it's you know Sympathize when you is to, you feel bad. Empathy is you understand. 
or something like that. Whatever. Something like that. I've been in the position, and you look at Twitter, and it says like a hundred plus notifications, and you're like, oh fuck, because it's never good. Oh god, it's never yeah. good. Yeah. And uh, so we. I think so. Yeah. Is that Olin? Yeah. yeah. We'll stop here. No, I mean. Is that Olin? Yeah, I think Olin Cruz just walked in the office. So go ahead, Dave. I, I, basically, all I want to know, Chief, is can you recreate this picture with Olin before he leaves? If can you show it to, to him? It, yeah. I, say, I mean, yeah. I'm sure he's open to it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, We're all about openness, aren't we? Hey, and before I get to Olin, I want to talk about my good friends at Innovative Care for all your ADHD medication needs. InnovativeADD.com. If you're a resident of Illinois, this company takes insurance. It's a great partner. For those of you that have a pain in the ass and a headache every time you have to get your ADHD medication, we know it can be a pain in the ass. Innovative is a real medical clinic. It's not one of those online only refill services. Yeah, that's important. I mean, also, I, like I've said many times in the show, I've gotten a COVID test there. All great, friendly people. Had a nice process. Like, I know some of those COVID places you walk in, it's chaos and uh, people waiting. And, you know, it just, it was, it was really well done and they, it was a well oiled machine. So, yep. highly recommend innovativeadd.com. Very simple process. It's uh, ADHD, ADHD care with dignity and compassion. Um, if you guys are residents of Illinois, highly recommend checking out InnovativeADD.com, InnovativeADD.com. They take insurance. That's huge. That's Te huge. That's test how them you, out. Yep. Try them out. InnovativeADD.com. Um, all right. Let's get to Olin Krutz. Let's get to Eddie, one of Eddie's favorites. Big time favorite. Whoosh. Yes. All right. Interview portion of the show right now. We're, we're joined by uh, Bears former center Olin Krutz. <laughs> Uh, Owen, obviously, big week for you. Mm -hmm. Let's just get that. <laughs> let's, let's get that out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, um, and then we'll like get into like actual Bears talk. But what mm -hmm. is what's it been like since that moment you heard George say that at the presser? Like, what have you been dealing with in the past couple of days? Just talking about it. Talking about like how I feel mm -hmm. about it, right? Like how I feel about someone saying I'm a liar. So how I feel about someone saying that my word is basically no good. Like that's different than saying um, the story is inaccurate, right? The story is inaccurate is different than saying this guy is f full of shit. Like that's mm -hmm. totally different mm -hmm. than what he said up there. Now, uh, I would I wasn't shocked that George McCaskey doesn't like me. That's why uh, is that? Well, I, I just yeah. you just just from some interactions with him in the building and um, me and him discussing a few things that happened when he was running the ticket office, right? And um, and, and to be honest with you, it's fascinating to me. I haven't talked to George in I don't know eleven years, maybe since I left the Bears. I haven't talked to him. George was never around the team when I was. A Chicago Bear. George uh, ran the ticket office. I never seen him on an airplane. I uh, never seen him in a locker room. Never seen him on a practice field. So the fact that he made that comment about me, like you were never around me, you have no clue, no idea, right? And obviously the things I say bug them on on whatever my podcast, the TV, the radio. But mm -hmm. I remember three or four four weeks ago, me and Jason McKee were about to do our podcast, and. I said to him, I said, look, I'm done with the whole Nagy and Ryan Pace thing. I'm done with it. Because we know what the problems are in the building, right? Yeah. I said, so I'm going to go after who I think is the problem in the building. I'm going to say what I think is wrong with the building and, and make them answer for it. So then, I, of course, I coined them the four horsemen, right? I said, the four horsemen up there, uh, Ted, I put Ryan in there. But, uh, you know, I said, it, like in wrestling, they, they have like, they, everybody turns heel and beats up one guy. So that's what yeah. they did to Ryan Pace. But uh, so I started talking about those uh, Scott Hagel, um, Ted Phillips, uh, George McCaskey a lot. And obviously when they ask him that question, people say, well, why do you answer like that? And and if, you know how you say like, man, the farther you get away, Olin, um, you'll get like a, you won't be as mad about what he said. You'll get perspective on, no, no, no. The farther I get from it, the more pissed off I get. I would be too. That he said that, right? Mm -hmm. Because to me, I don't give him credit for being, like people say, well, they just don't know what to say. I think, they talked about it, and that's the exact response they wanted to have towards me, right? So you deal with that 13 years. You love the Chicago Bears. You, you hope they win even though you're, you're an analyst and you talk about them, right? You cheer for them. Um, now all of a sudden the chairman of, of the Chicago Bears says basically you're a bad human being. That's what he says about you, right? Mm -hmm. In my eyes. I, I, um, so you deal with that. You respond to it. Obviously, as soon as I he said that, I'm thinking to myself, man, maybe I did 
I don't know if you guys swear on your podcast. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Swear yeah. Rip, maybe. maybe I did fuck the story up, right? Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm thinking to myself. And the yeah. kind of guy I am, I, I, I know Ryan Pace, yeah. right? I call him. I'm like, Ryan, man, like, and he's like, oh, and there's a misunderstanding. Obviously, we don't see the story the exact. I said, yeah, but what's the offer made? That's the, that's the story, right? Because uh, Spiegel's and Parkins on 6 7 score asked me, would you ever work for the Bears? Have you ever been? And I answered the question. It wasn't like I brought it up to like, I answered yeah, yeah, the question. Yeah. Anyway, so he confirms it, call Harry Heastan, who just took a job in Notre Dame. We're talking about it, congratulations to him. Confirm the story. Yeah, well, and I'm, I brought it to you. I brought the offer to you, right? So now the story is true, but yet you're, not only did you say the story wasn't true, you said basically, Everything I say, you you no one can listen to. Basically, what he said, right? So you're pissed about that. And in my opinion, if you're the chairman of the board, if you represent the McCassey family, that's the way they all feel about me, right? Because if you say that out loud, you are the representative mm -hmm. of the building. You are representative of the family. He speaks for the family. So now you're dealing with that stuff. But to be honest with you, um, you get to a point like you guys know. I mean. It doesn't bug me as much as just like, I'm gonna defend. Like people say like, man, why don't you let it go? Like, <laughs> no. like I, I hope, no, I hope that if anybody no. says something that about you guys, you'd fight. Oh, fuck, fuck yeah. Yeah, fuck oh yeah, yeah, fuck, you know, like, so like, basically, uh, I, I guess that's what you're going through and just answering the questions, but you know, you don't think about it all day. Like I run my gym, I got my kids, Yeah, I train, you know, he, what George McCaskey, like he probably doesn't even know I train some of his players. Like, that's, how, that's how dumb this guy is, right? That's how, <laughs> that's how out of touch removed. he is. He's removed from what you're actually doing. Like Olin, like you're not helping, uh, you, you don't trust your word. I, I, like bro, like I, I train guys who play for you. Like, yeah. like in, in, in a way, in another way, I'm trying to help you win games. Like what, mm -hmm. what the hell are you talking about? Like. I'm helping your young linemen become starters, like helping them study film, helping them with techniques on how to block the guy they're going against in season for you, because you're the owner. You're right. But now you're gonna come on and say, well, hey, man, everything only says is a lie. It's nonsense, right? So, it's nonsense. And when you listen to the whole podcast, I mean, the whole press conference, when he says that, it doesn't shock me. But when you watched it live, he paused, took a sip of water when they brought up my name, Mm -hmm. And this was what he, they wanted to do. Him, yeah. Ted Phillips, and Scott Hagel, they wanted to attack my character and my word and basically tell Chicago and Illinois, don't trust what this guy is saying on the airwaves. I do agree with that. The way it was like presented, it almost was calculated. Yep. Like, hey, like here's our feeling. Not like, Ole Miss. Remember yeah, yeah, what yeah. George's background is. He was a former state attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's coached in it. He, this is not oh, – it wasn't almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they have – they. They prepared for this press conference. Yeah. If you didn't know that question was coming, I know Scott Hagel, uh, uh, senior vice president of communications, and I know I know him. They knew the question was going to come up. What's your relationship with him? It's fine. I mean, yeah. same as <laughs> no, <nah>, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Same yeah. as every, like, and, and you know, I text him. You know, I'll be honest on on here. I text him immediately. Yeah. That's the way you feel. Cool, man. Like yeah. like, and I'm mad, but like, just so we know. Did he respond? Yeah, just you know, Olin, um, just. Do you, do you ever want to talk about it? No, there's nothing to talk about anymore. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I don't, not like, you know, I hate you. You know, I'm not going to do that. Everybody up there has got kids and family, and that's fine. But, okay, cool. Like, that's what you're going to say about, not that story is inaccurate. No, I'm not going to say that. What I say is, we all know. Oh, no, no, you don't. Right. You have no clue who the fuck I am. Yeah, you have yeah. no idea yeah. who the fuck I am. Now, is it like a group up there that's maybe shaping this opinion of you? Because, how oh, I'm like, listen. You go back to 98 now, and, I, and you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. Everybody knows stories about me and how I was in my 20s. And yeah, like there was a lot of shit I did up there that people probably are still mad about, right? Yeah. A lot of things I would say and uh, the way I, my personality and the way I talk to people and all that kind of, you know, University mm -hmm. of Washington had mm -hmm. their stories about me. Yeah. St. Louis High School, their stories about me, right? That, that was how it was, so I'm sure, but holy shit, guys, like it's, 2022. You're I mean, an adult yeah. now. Yeah, now I'm 44. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, like I, I did like everything he says is it, like. So that's what you're dealing with. It's just it, it was it was just I, I can't say I was shocked, but I'm shocked that people don't expect I'm gonna defend myself. Like, you know what I'm a little shocked about is that you have multiple platforms you can go on. You're in media, and they still thought that they could get away with it. Actually, you know what I should say? I'm I'm not shocked at all. 
because of how inept this organization has been for the last decade plus since Lovey Smith, since you were there. Mm -hmm. It's also just such a bad look for them. Like, regardless of how they feel about you or if they did think that, mm -hmm. you're taking a, you're throwing a guy under in the mud mm -hmm. that played for you for 10, 12 years. And was awesome so, for you. Right. That went to war for you. So yeah. if you're, and, if you're and, some other player and it's like, oh, that's how they treat their mm -hmm. ex-players? I don't know. That's a well, very, I, I don't very think that, bad look. that would affect the Bears, right? Money is, the, you're, you're a player. They, they come to sign you as a free agent. You're going <clears> to go to war. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. the football side, the, the general manager, whoever ends up being the head coach, mm -hmm. is totally separate of that side I, I but but if you're like we're talking about that as an analyst like i take myself out of it i say look what if this was another like like i like i said on i forget what i what platform i said on, i said gosh man the last game i played for the bears i tore a ligament in my foot it was the 2010 2011 nfc championship game third quarter um the right tackle i forget his name now but he gets thrown by ryan pickett onto my leg i tear a ligament in my foot i walk to the sideline i tell mike tice think i broke my foot that's what it felt like right thing popped he said can you finish right i'm i'm, I'm a 13th in my 13th year i'm about to be a free agent on the market i do want to continue playing i think and i say yeah let's finish let's finish the game you know what i mean and, and it ends up i tore my liz frank in my foot mm -hmm. and i played on the torn Liz Frank. like that's what i was doing for your team like yeah, like this yeah. is just nonsense. What you're doing. anyway, but but uh, with, with George, like my question for him would be: If I'm at that press conference, obviously, first of all, what's the philosophy of your whole building? I don't think they know that. And second of all, do you actually love football? Like, do you love the game of football? It right? didn't because, sound like it. Because if you don't, Carl, here's the thing: you don't respect the guys who played it, right? You mm, don't respect yeah. the people who are on the field playing. If someone asked me this, Olin, do you hate the Bears now? Here's my answer to that: No. Because for me, the Chicago Bears is Brian Urlacher. Mm -hmm. The Chicago Bears are Walter Payton. Chicago Bears is Jay Hilgenberg. Chicago Bears are Tony Medlin, who runs the equipment room. Chicago Bears is Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak. Mm -hmm. uh, all my former teammates are the Chicago Bears. George McCaskey is about as far away from the Chicago Bears as I would describe that. He is the McCaskey family, no doubt. How much football has George McCaskey played in his life? Right, I, I don't know. Maybe he has zero. I have no idea. Yeah. Right, he he went into being an attorney, ticket office. I don't know how much he actually loves and respects the game. And in that point, I'm not shocked he says that about me. Right, if I look at it from that point of view, I'm not shocked that he doesn't like a guy who carries himself like the way I carry myself. Right, mm -hmm. and that's why they say we love collaborating in this building. We love talking to each other and all getting along. Not my style. Right, not really the way I carry myself, and I will say things, especially in my 20s. Uh, I remember we had a, a, a story uh, he told a young linebacker, I won't say his name. Uh, George was not happy that he wasn't wearing a T-shirt at the ticket window, and George was screaming at him. So I screamed back at George, because I don't think you should, as an owner, be screaming at a young guy like that. And we had a conversation, like the only conversation in my 44 years of life that I've had with George McCaskey, that's it. Right, so we see things differently. I don't think you should be using your status like that to scream at a young linebacker, mm -hmm. right? Just because yeah. he has a shirt off. Sure. Are you mad because he's built better than you? That's I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's I the uh, reaction been from former teammates, guys? You're so close to. Well, I, I don't want to name names, but you know, I get a lot of messages. You know, like F them. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I, and you know, I, I I always I will honestly tell you guys this. I always answer the same way because they say F the Bears. I'm like, no, no. The Bears are bigger than that. What they did was wrong, no doubt. But remember, man, I always, I text them back. I say, you're the Chicago Bears. Like, they're not. Yeah. Right? They're not the, the Chicago Bears. And I'm going to tell you guys where I learned that lesson. I learned that lesson in 2011 when Jerry Angelo came to resign me and we had like a personal – it was just personal. It became personal between us. Mm -hmm. And I didn't sign back. It was a mistake by me. I should have came back and played here that year, my last year. And I let, in my mind, thinking the Bears screwed me. Jerry Angelo did. Mm -hmm. Right? I shouldn't let Jerry Angelo, me and Jerry's feelings, I, I love, you know, I, I always tell people, Jerry Angelo, man, the amount of money he paid me and gave me, like, <laughs> I can't be mad at that guy <laughs> to play center, okay? Yeah. Like, he's paid me. Ah, yeah, well, yeah. 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 So I'm not, I don't hate that guy. Listen, my, my house is pretty big. You know, I got, yeah, I got yeah, a good yeah. life. Uh, 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 things are good. Uh, but, but, I learned that that day, right? Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, no. Like, Jerry has, Jerry's not that Chicago Bears. N not that day, but as I got older. And, and I, I always call players and I always tell them that. Tell your agent 
to just call you with the final number. Mm -hmm. Don't tell them, don't call you with all the things they're saying about you. Just what is the final number? That's all I want to know. I don't want to know he said I'm old and, and all this kind of stuff. So that's where like I get that mentality from. And I won't let George affect the way I feel about the Chicago Bears or Hallis Hall or the people in it. And the way it's everyone feels about you. Like that, like right. you know, that's kind of it. Like you to me, like you're you're way more important than George McCaskey. Like we can't wait to get rid of that guy. Well, I think for me it's about fifty fifty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some guys feel good and some guys no, don't. It's uh it's good perspective though, Owen, because I mean, you know, there's been like just enduring some of these losses we've had this last decade. And, you know, it's it, it's tough sometimes, but you know, you're always you always wear you always throw that hat back on, you know. But seeing that, that he he looked like he was on tilt, man. Like yeah. that's you've seen that guy in that presser, like he seemed off, dude. I don't know what it was, but that was like the most demoralizing it's been to been a fan in a long time, I think, because it's just like it was def it was like defensive and it was like I like it was, it was odd. It was it yeah. was very strange. Did yeah. you get that sense too, besides what he said? Yeah, but I kinda knew it would be because I kind of figured that it was going in a direction of what people were gonna ask him. Yeah. What are you doing? Right. What do you know about football? And I think the answer we got was nothing, right? I'm, I'm just a fan. Mm -hmm. So, like, you go to, like, Bill Polian, and you, man, who doesn't have respect for Bill Polian? The yeah. guy's a football guy. Uh, uh, had I've, I've had a few conversations with Bill Polian. I tell you, he's no, he, this guy would not bullshit. You know? mm -hmm. He's going to tell you straight <coughs> exactly what he thinks. But if you're not in the building every day, you don't know the problems. That's just a fact. Like, if you're not in the building every single day, you don't know the problems that need to be fixed. So what is Bill Poland actually fixing would be my question to him. Mm -hmm. Like, what, because every guy who gets hired here, like, everybody, oh, what do you think about the general manager? Well, they're all good. I mean, if you get to this level, right? Like, if you get to this level where you're getting, mm -hmm. hot, like, interviewed to be a general manager, interviewed to be a head coach, you're good at what you do. Mm -hmm. You're the best in the world. It's the building, the problems that need to be fixed in this specific building. What team do they want to build in this building? And what's your philosophy? And the thing with George is when he sits there, he knew those kind of questions were coming. He doesn't have answers. And you guys all know, if you come do, do this damn podcast and you're not ready for it, you're a little uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Like we all done that. I've done podcasts for a while. I didn't study very much. Yeah. And I felt like an idiot talking the whole day. I was just making bullshit up. That's what he's doing on the stage when you hear him say, I'm a fan, but, but, but I'm going to... Did this dude just say he's a fan and a general? Yes, is what he said. Like, yeah. and here's here's part of the podcast I think a lot of guys miss. Sorry if I'm talking too much. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> just say shut the fuck up. But uh, <laughs> he said at one point, right? You heard him. He said, uh, Coach Nagy came to him in season to ask him about Justin Fields. What do you think about Justin Fields playing? His and he said, I was uncomfortable with that situation. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Holy shit, George. <laughs> Put up a grease board and tell Nagy, well, let's talk about it. I'll give you my opinion. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but let's talk about it. Okay, now list why you think he should, shouldn't be playing. Now let's put on this side why he should be playing. Now let's put our offensive line up. Now let's put our receivers up. Now what can he learn from playing? How can we help him get better as a quarterback? What does he gain from playing? Gosh, it's pretty fucking simple, right? Like mm -hmm. you're going to problem solve the biggest problem in your building that's been there Shit, I snapped to 17 different quarterbacks, right? <laughs> like, it's been there for years. Is like, that the real number? Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> the real number. And that's not the number of guys going in and out during the season. So yeah. anyway, that didn't sound right. But <laughs> listen, like, he, but but what I'm saying, though, is you just, like, the, when he said that to me, out of everything he said, like, as a, as a football guy, and I love fucking football, man. I, I, hope, I hope people can tell that. Like, as a football guy, oh, yeah. like, when he said that to me, that was the most baffling thing. Like you had a chance at, to help problem solve the biggest problem in your building. And the head coach came to you not because he doesn't know the answer. It's because if I don't know an answer, I'm going to go to somebody I respect and be like, hey, man, what do you think about this? I got my own ideas, but I just need a little bit of, just want to talk to somebody, grab yeah. a beer, whatever you drink, mm -hmm. coffee, probably George, green tea. I drink green tea too, <laughs> but whatever you drink and you, and you just start talking about it, right? Like I'm just going to talk about and you just put up on a grease board, like this is why Justin Fields should be playing. This is his limitations right now. This is what he would bring to the team. This is what he would. Mm -hmm. That's simple to me. Yeah. But he said, man, that made me really uncomfortable. 
Yeah. No, he, he's picking he's, the next GM and head he, coach. He's not a leader. Like, that's kind of what it comes down to. That's what it sounds like. And it's like he, maybe it makes him uncomfortable because if he doesn't touch the problem, then it can't be his fault, mm-hmm. even though his fingers are really on everything in that organization one way or another. Yeah, I mean, gosh, if you're worried about that, you're in the wrong business, right? If you're yeah. worried about oh, being wrong, yeah. yep. if you're worried about looking bad, I mean, you're like – like that that was one of my big problems with, with what he said about me was like um like I do analyze and I do say some crazy stuff sometimes. But he like for him not to remember that I took that stuff for thirteen years. Yep. Like I took criticism for thirteen years for years. I sat there ne- like you can't find an article or a comment where I sold my teammates out or talk bad about the organization at all. And I played around a lot of bad offense linemen and a lot of bad quarterbacks and never said a word about it. Mm-hmm. Right. I remember of them asking me, Olin, what's wrong with the offensive line in 2010 when we went to the NFC Championship game? And I'm sitting there like, you guys can't do the math. Like, they gave Julius Peppers $100 million to play on the fourth-ranked defense, right? And they gave me Frank Omeow and, and, and a bunch of other guys here, right? Jamarcus Webb. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like we're not going to be good guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. not rocket science. Mm-hmm. But you don't, you don't say any of that stuff, right? right. You just... All right, but but that's what I, like, I think they forget that. Like, with all the criticism they're taking, how mad they were at me. Like, I sat in your chair for 13 years and took that criticism while you were selling tickets and saying you're the man of the fans. I sat there and played ball and took the shit that rolled downhill at me for 13 years. Mm-hmm. Longer than you've been doing it as the chairman. What do you think it was that made, you know, Angelo – be able to have some success like what, what was it what was different it, to me it's it's pretty simple right to me like if you look at the chicago bears you look at developing football players which is one of their biggest problems can you get a guy to take a step to all pro can you get like i always say like can you have a no doubt all pro pro bowl type player and by that i mean we'll all agree, agree that we love watching roquan smith play awesome. we yeah. love doing his we love i love when he does his rko from randy orton like he's his, his tackling like, yeah what yeah. is that yeah. like he just bulldogs the guy i love that stuff right but would you say he's a no doubt he's no doubt all pro right like you could argue for wagner you could argue for warren you could argue for darius mm-hmm. leonard yeah in the building at that time we had a first ballot hall of fame football player brian Urlacher. Mm-hmm. we had the best to ever do it Devin hester Right when you got guys like that, yeah. when they show up on Sunday, you got a chance, man. And and, and you just got to look at the. All you gotta do is look at the stats. When Brian Urlacher was hurt, the defense wasn't with all the guys they had. They weren't even top ten. When he broke his, when he hurt his wrist, when he hurt his thumb, whatever it was that year, I think that year because Jay threw like. I don't know, 20 something interceptions. I think I beat Erlacher in tackles that year. I always remind you of that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, and he doesn't like that. Erlacher's very competitive, right? But, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, but, but it, it's, it's, and then, you know, Lovey was very consistent. Uh, pre, his scheme fit Erlacher and those guys perfect and Peanut Tillman. And I think it was, what year did Lovey get fired? 2000 and. It was uh, 2011. 11. It, yeah, 2010. It was his last year, right? No, no, no. He Because that was my last year. So it would have been two years. 2012. After 2012. 2012. It was his last year. 44 yeah. takeaways they had that year. That's a lot of takeaways. Jesus. They were plus 20 and didn't make the playoffs. That's unbelievable. Eight of those came against the Titans, though, I think. <laughs> it did. I don't right? know if you remember that. Yeah. But, but think about that. You know what the Bears had in 2018? 38. Right, so yeah. 44, 38, that defense that was, we all agree, in 2018, mm-hmm. Lakeem Hicks and Cleo Mack. I said, I think 2018, they honored Lack. Uh, was it the Cowboys they played? They honored Erlacher yeah. on the field halftime? Yeah. So I sat in the end zone with Garza, Roberto Garza, great guy, good friend of mine. And I'm watching Akeem Hicks and Khalil Mack in the end zone rush. And I looked at him. I go, bro, I would not want a fucking piece. <laughs> I would cheat. I swear to God, I'd grab Akeem's face mask. Like, it's the only chance you got, right? Like, I would yeah. cut him. I would threaten to blow his knee out. Like, what other chance do you have? To, at that time, like, Akeem Hicks and Khalil Mack and that D-line, Eddie Goldman at the time, Eddie's really dropped off. But at that time, man, they were, that defense was. And if you think about their staff, right, like Fangio, Donatel, Staley, Rodgers that's an all that's it yeah okay yeah. so anyway uh, uh Lovey's philosophy was very consistent for a building that's very inconsistent mm-hmm. Lovey would like you'd almost think he's crazy like you were like losing not doing well and he's preaching the exact same thing 
and you're like, <laughs> like coach, this shit's not working, <laughs> right? And he didn't care. Oh, big guy, if you just hang in there, <laughs> you know. And, so, and I'd be in his office, like, bro, like this shit is not working. Just you know, we're gonna get those takeaways, and you guys just run the ball, and you don't. And I'm like, and the next thing you know, like he's saying. You're in Tennessee and Peanut is punching a ball out. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit, it's another thing. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's in a locker room like, told you guys, if you just stay. <laughs> <laughs> just like, stay in the corner. Let me guy. ask you a question. Yeah. I, uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine from Arizona last night. He's like, who do you think the Bears are going to hire? And I'm like, you know what? I don't even give a shit at this point because I, unless they luck into a hire, then it's going to be, we're going to be having the same conversation three, four, five years down the road or whatever, in my opinion, because of, like you said, the four horsemen running it are all the same. The mm -hmm. constants are the same. And did they look into Lo Lovey Smith, do you think? Because that was, a, we're all in our early 30s now. Mm -hmm. Other than Chief, he's like 40. But, um, <laughs> like, unless they look into a, a, a front office and a head coach, I, I just don't see anything changing because of the guys that you had already mentioned. Yeah, and, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, I got to go back and look at this story now that we're going through all of this. But I think that they didn't, they wanted, I think Jerry wanted Saban. I think he wanted Nick Saban was the story. And then kind of ended up with Lovey. So, yeah, you would say he lucked right. in a Lovey yeah. Smith mm -hmm. uh, and that coaching staff that love, you know, Ron Rivera, mm -hmm. awesome. you know, yeah. you know yeah. ends up being a head mm -hmm. coach. I, I always think, like, if you go back and look at successful teams and go through their coaching staff, not only there's players, but there's a combination of, like, when some people are on a run, there's so, it's like someone like Lovey and Rod Marinelli and Ron Rivera with Brian Urlacher. Mm -hmm. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, so, yeah. like very mm -hmm. good common. Like, I remember thinking this thought a while ago. I'm thinking, like, I'm going to look at our 2002 playoff game, 2001 season versus the Eagles. Because I remember thinking in that game while I was playing, like, gosh, these guys know exactly what we're doing. This is nuts. And, and sure enough, I don't know if you guys remember Jim Johnson, but Jim Johnson was the defense quarter for the Eagles. Yep. He's the one who came up with the double A gap blitz. That was his kind of creation. And he was uh, he was awesome to go against. So they had Brian Dawkins and all these guys. But um, on the staff, Ron Rivera, right? Uh, Spagnola was on the staff. Um, I think Leslie Frazier is on the I staff, coach, mm. right? It's yep. just, it was, uh, their assistant on the defense staff was Sean McDermott, hmm. right? So like yeah. the staff is just loaded for people. And then when you look at it, you're like, they did know yeah, everything we, sense. you know, it was, yeah. it was those guys versus John Shoup. Like <laughs> we got, <laughs> and John Shoup ended up becoming a very good coach, right? Yeah. I mean, he went on, but he was young at the time. Yeah. He was young at yeah. the time and he ended up going to Purdue and, and doing a good job. But uh, uh, Jerron had tabbed him after Gary Croton, we remember went to BYU yep. as the head coach. I always remember Gary Croton saying he's leaving for BYU and driving out the building and trying to wave at everybody and Big Cat flicked him off. <laughs> 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 Big Cat yeah. was the best. But, um, so like, like coaching has a lot to do with that and, and Lovey's consistency. And that, that's why if you look at their defensive staff as opposed to our offensive staff when Lovey was here and the players, you're not wondering anymore why they were so good on that side of the ball. So that's interesting then. Do you buy into like just get a leader at the top theory and then have someone I buy I buy into a leader who, who recognizes what their problems are every day and can fix them before they become a big problem. Uh -huh. right? Because the Bears, if they're honest about, okay, what's our problem here? It's okay who's the strength coach, right? Because if I can get Khalil Mack just healthy, I just need him healthy. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't really matter who his D-line coach is, yeah. right? So then yeah, I yeah. fix that problem, right? I fix that problem. Okay, how do I get Khalil Mack playing at a high level again? Uh, can they answer the questions of, do I watch two games with Justin Fields? I got to watch it with the coach. What do you think about the scheme he's in here? What does he have to improve on? How do you help him do that, right? And then as, as the time goes on, it's like, uh, how do I get every player developed? How do I get Eddie Goldman back to playing at a high level? Why do you think he's not playing at a high level, coach, right? Why do you think he took a drop off? What do you see on film from 2019 to right 2022 where he hasn't played very good football? Yeah. Eddie Jackson. I got to throw Eddie Jackson's film on. Right? How do I get Jalen Johnson to touch someone down at the end of the game? Right? What would you do in this situation here? How do you recognize these problems that show up in week one and then they show up in week 17 again? Right? So the, 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 coach, the head coach problem by a leader, you mean you can handle every part of the building. Like I can see problems – my strength, coach, my strength staff is not good enough. I gotta go down there and get that that shit straight. My nutritionist is not good enough. I gotta go down there and get get that shit straight. Cause I gotta get my players developed to an all pro, to a pro bowl type level so we can compete every single week. Mm -hmm. 
So someone who's just going to put the guys in the right position to succeed. Yeah, but, but yeah. because there is there anybody even out there who could do that based on the fact they've never let that person in the building? Well, there is people out there who can do that, but like you guys know, like when you run this podcast, right? Like it takes each and every one, right? Like to have this place blow up to what Barstool has become, there is a lot of people who are part of this. Yeah. So what Ted Phillips and George McCaskey and these guys up there don't understand is they're affecting the building every single day. And even if they don't think they're affecting the football side, they are, right? If you're hiring the media people who are touching the football players, you are affecting them. You are affecting the fact that uh, in the mid season, we find out that Coach Nagy has been fired and if we for a Thanksgiving game and we don't hear from anybody, mm -hmm. right? That affects the team, right? Uh, um, I forget which, I think Cole Komet came out and I was like, That's a, that was a weird. Yeah. Right, and then George McCaskey tells you, well, we didn't think we should respond to it. Well, George, yeah, because then we got to respond in the future. And, yeah. and you might have to. They bundled that. Yeah. They yeah. fucked that up. Yeah. yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, when you start messing things up like that, it may just look like a crack on that side of the building, but that affects your whole building. And they are affecting their whole building. And they don't seem to want to admit that, that part that, look, yeah. it's not the general manager, it's not the head coach who's the problem here. Everybody who's been has been quiet. Remember how much people loved Ryan Pace when he came here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, he was highly sought after now. He had a great reputation, and he leaves he leaves a little soil by the Chicago Bears. Right? And Ryan's a great guy. Uh, works hard. No, he wanted nothing more to do than to win for the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. and, and so did Coach Nagy, right? I, Coach Nagy, I didn't like his scheme. I, I didn't like his style, but but he did too. And he was highly sought after too. He was getting interviewed everywhere yep. when he came up because uh, Peterson just won the Super Bowl. And that whole um, way they built the team, right? Peterson, DiFilippo, uh, Frank Wright put three quarterback coaches in one room. And you guys have seen that here now for the last four years. Mm -hmm. So it's to me, uh, unless they get lucky like you're saying, Four years, five years from now, here we are again. What? That's why the Bears are always like a flash in yeah. the pan. There's no consistency. That's why I thought it was a good question. I forgot who asked it. They asked uh, George McCaskey, what kind of football team do you want to see walk on the football field? Smart, yeah, tough, tough. Uh, gritty, gritty, opportunistic, and winning football were his answers. Right. 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 Love Those are the five things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's right. like... But how, how much autonomy do you think Ryan Pace has? So you're talking that you need a guy who's going to fix the strength department. You need a guy who's going to fix um, your nutrition. Like, does Ryan Pace have the ability to go and say to George or whoever and be like, hey, we need more resources here? Is he Does he have full autonomy to change, or is there like a level that he has I, to Honestly, to? I, I think he probably had full autonomy. Okay. I think he didn't, like, really put the right people in those positions, right? And in my opinion – when you look at an NFL building, and I'm biased, obviously, there's only only what the 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 lie in an, in an NFL building is this: that everyone there is elite at what they do. Mm -hmm. That's the lie. There's only one group of guys in there who are, by definition, the best in the world at what they do, and that's the football players. They are actually the guys who work their way through the process of high school. And I got my I, I'm I'm the best in high school. I'm in college. That I'm the best in college, now I'm in the NFL. There's only, gosh, I don't know, 5,000 NFL players. Mm -hmm. Everybody else who's hired, I don't know if they've ever proven that mm -hmm. they are the absolute best in the world at what they do. They should be one of the 32 people in the world at their job, right? Because there's only 30, whatever job you do in the NFL building, there's only 32 of them, mm -hmm. right? So in my opinion, if you want to be consistent, you want to win, unless you have someone who is the absolute best in the world at what he does, which is Bill Belichick, you have to find the guy, the strength coach, the trainer, right? The media guy. Like this guy is the best in, and you have to search for him until you find him. And I don't think people do that enough. I think they hire who they know. They bring in guys they know and they, they can, I don't think they recognize early enough like, gosh, I'm not getting out of this part of my building what I need, mm -hmm. right? And they shouldn't be personal. The NFL should just be about, I got to get to where we're winning games, man. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I'm here for. Now, I know you were only with the Saints for a limited time, but there was mm -hmm. with Sean Payton. His name has been kind of floated out there, probably just because he's a Naperville guy. Did you notice anything like right away mm -hmm. that was different and oh, yeah. better Sean in Sean is as good as it gets. Okay. He's a, wow. In my opinion, Sean Payton is as good as a head coach. He has his, he has his, uh, uh, he has his finger on everything that goes on in that building. Mm -hmm. And you see that this year. They had like 50 guys out. They've won through three or four different quarterbacks, yeah. right? They almost made it. I mean, they almost made it, right? Yeah. I mean, with all the injuries they had, all the guys they had out, uh, for somehow Drew Brees retired. He kept them moving in the right direction. Now, he is a disciple of Bill Parcells, right? Mm -hmm. like he 
when I was there, he would always say, Bill said this and Bill said that. And so he has a very good feeling of what is going on in his building. And when, when, when I had that fallout with the New Orleans Saints, an interesting part of that story is uh, when me and Aaron Cromer went at it, that's the game that Sean blew his knee out. So Sean wasn't there mm. in I the remember. building yeah, yeah, when yeah. all that stuff yeah. happened. So the, that Tampa Bay game was the last game I played. Mm -hmm. And when they went up on stage and it was Joe Vitt was his linebacker assistant head coach, and he said, we got to get the whole old line fixed, and that starts with the center. Joe Vitt, who the score, I think that game was like 40 to 43 to 40 or something. He just gave 40 points. Anyway, um, so I had a problem with that part of the way they handled the situation with me. Anyway, he's not there that day. Yeah. In the building, and you can see, as soon as the head man's not there, it's a vacuum. Yeah. It's a vacuum, yeah. Yeah. right? The guy, the leader was not there, and he tried, like, he came back, you know, with his, he had his brace on, he's trying to explain to me, like, oh, and I said, well, I mean, I mean, coach, I just threatened to beat up your offensive line. Coach. I don't know if I should be here anymore. <laughs> yeah, right? so, yeah, yeah. so anyway, what I'm saying is, yeah. once your leader is gone. Yeah. Rudderless yeah. shit. Yeah, it's a yeah. rudderless shit. But yes, I, I, my personal opinion, as good as it gets. Okay. As, a, as a coach, as good as I've been around, uh, uh, very detail oriented, knows what his team needs, demanding, but also fair. Like, just a good, like, the Bears would be lucky. I don't know how with no draft picks or whatever's going on. I don't know how they would get him. Mm -hmm. But if they did get a guy like Sean, yes. Okay. Do you okay. buy that that's possible or no? Do you think he'd ever leave? I, I don't think he'd leave New Orleans. I think he would, like, you're seeing from Harbaugh, he may leverage the Bears to get yeah. more money from yeah, them, yeah, you know. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, what would the Bears give up to have to get? Sean Payton from Mickey Loomis, who you know Mickey's yeah. been working in for years now, right? Yeah. If you're Mickey Loomis, you know how you, like you're not losing him. No, I mean like how many Hall of Fame quarterbacks are in the league right now? Aaron Rodgers, um, Tom Brady, 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 Roethlisberger. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Okay, so to me, honestly, I, I wonder what you guys think about this. I think there's less Hall of Fame head coaches yeah. than there are Hall of Fame quarterbacks for sure. Belichick and Payton. For Off sure, the top of my head. and like it, we and we we very easily glossed over quarterbacks right now, mm -hmm. like just between Philip Rivers and Russ Wilson, and like you probably yeah. go down the line and find ten guys that have like Hall of Fame candidacy that have played in like the last you know three to five years. NFL coaches. That's just what are you those saying? Two Andy Reid, no. Tomlin, probably it's like Andy, Andy Reid, Tomlin, Pete Carroll, Belichick, Pete Carroll. Pete, Carroll. Pete, Pete Carroll, yeah. But but what I'm saying is like it's a handful, right? right. So as hard as to fall, find a Hall of Fame quarterback, that's how hard it is to find a Hall of Fame, yeah, yeah coach. People, people right? don't say that enough. Yeah, I, yeah. I I I, I, yeah. Think I had never thought of it. Yeah, I, I the, the reason why I, I think about it a lot is I go all over. I talk to coaches, um, help coach. I've played a long time. I mean. I don't see a lot of good football coaches. Now, is there. is that because, like uh, you just said, it's all about putting the right people in place and, you know, this guy gives – it kind of seems like even when these guys get in order, they just kind of give their buddies, like the D-line job and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like how big of a problem is that? It's a huge problem. It's a yeah. huge problem. And the fact that when you recognize this guy's not doing the job – like for me, uh, uh, in the NFL, it's almost immediately time to move on. Like once the guy shows you who he is, that's who he is. Mm -hmm. Like, Like unless he'll – even, you know, because the NFL season is so hard and so long that who you are is going to come out. Mm -hmm. There's so much pressure. Uh, you have to work like you have to be putting in your film study. Like f the game ends on Sunday, mm -hmm. you got to be working to beat that next team Sunday night, or you're behind. You're behind by five six hours, and once you get behind by five or six hours, you lost the game. Yeah. Period. That, that, that's that's no. And, and if I see a coach who won't do that for me, and nowadays it shouldn't be that hard. You got Zoom. You got yeah. you take your work home. Right, you should mm -hmm. be putting in work. So as soon as you recognize it, you should know it, and then you just gotta move on, man. If I'm not getting what I want, like we keep talking about, out of my strength room, which to me uh, is like is a point of like if I ran a building, that'd be a point of emphasis because mm -hmm. I think it's not in other buildings, so I get an advantage there, right? Like I get an advantage in my weight room. I'm looking for any advantage I can get, and that's why I have to when when the guys come in. I got to ask him these questions. I got to get answers from them, mm -hmm. right? Like, here's the history of the Chicago Bears. Let me put up the history of the Chicago Bears. Let me show you what our team's problems have always been. How are you going to fix that for me? What do you make of people saying that they're going to hire the head coach before the GM and people are upset about that? Yeah, it's nonsense, right? Why would it's, you do that? Yeah, it's just it's, unbelievable. It's, it's, it's just it's more crazy. of like the same. Like, what, what the hell are you guys doing? Like, that's not the way it works. Like, yeah. I'm not going to put then so, so what? So the general manager can bring in players that, 
pretty much undermine the coach. So he can finally go out and get his, you know. Exactly. I've, I've seen that. I've seen uh, uh, Jerry Angelo, he, he was here, trade Ted Washington to New England. Ted was like our best leader and almost our best player. Yeah. And, he, and New England won the Super Bowl that year. Yep. We played them at Champaign, actually, in the preseason. And they had a DN and nose guard. And I forget who he was, but I was talking trash to him the whole game. I was like, bro, you cannot hold up in here. Like, they got to get somebody else. I was like, New England ain't got a chance this year to compete with who they got in the middle. <laughs> and Jerry Angelo trades them the best nose guard in the, in the history yeah. of the NFL. The guy who, Jesus. I don't know if you guys remember Ted Washington. He, he was, was a mountain. He was a mountain. He was a mountain. He was a mountain. He was a mountain. And he was smart. Yep. He was a hell of a leader for us. He I mean, great yeah. feet. He was fun. What about yeah. Tractor? What about Keith? Keith was good. Keith was okay. good player. Keith Which is because having those two, I remember oh, yeah. people would say like that. Would, that is what allowed Erlacher to run all over the field. Is having did. those two guys. And and and, and uh, Ted and Erlacher would tell you this. He would yell at Erlacher when a uh, young Brian Erlacher. But um, <laughs> don't, like remember now, it was Ted, Keith. Philip Daniels, yep. who ended up being like a nose guard once he left, mm -hmm. and Brian Robinson, who ended up being a nose guard in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Then it was Warwick Holman, uh, Roosevelt Colvin. Good players. Lack, Roosevelt Colvin was a good player. Tony Parrish. Mm -hmm. Mike Brown. I think that defense gave up like under 12 points a game. That's, it was, it was they unbelievable. They were good, man. Yep. I mean, and our W McCord. Our W. Oh, man, our W used to have a, 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 a candy jar by his locker. We just grabbed candy. But on it, he had a tape. It said uh, <laughs> he had like a thing you could put money in. It said uh, tipping is not a city in China. <laughs> <laughs> he had great pick six against the Cowboys on yeah. on. Uh, you got a weird time. memory for this stuff. That's great. Yeah. If uh, you as Owen Crutes, who who's the next head coach of Chicago Bears? Yeah, it's just that's for me. That's like if I don't get to talk to him, I'm just going off of like yeah. Yeah. scheme and. Um, well then, that, how about that? Like, what type of scheme you've seen a lot of Justin Fields at this point? Like, what? What? I, how do you would, set him up for success? I would love um, someone from the Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan, actually Gary Kubiak, outside zone boot system. Mm -hmm. My problem is, I think that there's only so many guys who are good at it, yeah. and now those guys, it's just kind of watered all the way down, right? Like you see, um, who's the guy in Seattle now? He came from Sean McVay, and he's not running anything that looks like a Sean McVay system, mm -hmm. right? So like. Like LaFleur La runs it in Green Bay, right? Uh, they they run a, kind of a version of it in Tennessee. They kind of run in Atlanta. Uh, but but I would love to see that. If I could get that scheme here, but I don't know if that guy would be the leader that I would need in my building. I mean, a, a guy, I, I, I can only go off guys I know. Uh, Dave Toll would be a kind of guy for me. Like just that kind yeah. of leader. He's demanding. Mm -hmm. But but from what I understand from the special teams guys, um, they love playing for him, right? Uh, he, he makes like a, if you're out of the, uh, Pat Manley was telling a story like if you're out of uh, the season he makes like a point system so everybody's competing at the point system if you're out of the playoffs mm -hmm. that kind of guy who still gets okay. things out of people even when like the Bears are going through this year to, they're playing for nothing mm -hmm. right so uh, uh, Dave Toll would be an interesting interview for me I think Todd Bowles interesting interview a uh, young guy would be Leftwich, uh, the OC mm -hmm. there. I still don't yep. know how much has been Tom Brady, how much has been Leftwich, yeah. how much is Bruce Arians. So I'd have to get in there and talk to him, right? Yeah. Okay, like um, I think Eberflus, the the, the Colts. Colts D coordinator, uh, kind of brings a lovey feel for me. Like when I watch their defense, mm -hmm. it looks like they're preaching the same. That that cover two, uh, Rod Marinelli, uh, Monty Kiffin type defense. Monty Kiffin is the old yep. uh, D coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yep. Um, it just kind of it, it, it preaches like consistency. Like mm -hmm. they believe in what they believe in. Yeah. This is what we do. So if he preaches that, I kind of think the Bears need someone like that. Yeah. It's very consistent. Is there any credence to bringing in a defensive coach so then you can get an offensive coordinator and kind of like put them away with Justin Fields and then you have like the defensive coach that can kind of you know be like the CEO of everything and when they're asking him questions about Justin Fields in the office, he can offense, he can kind of like well, that's that's more the offensive coordinator. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they can kind of specialize like that. Is that helpful yeah. at all if you if you're thinking about a defensive coach? Yeah, I mean, if you think about say, like, let's say they 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 really like what Leslie Frazier has to say, and he brings Ken Dorsey, who has been under Brian mm -hmm. DeBall, yep. an office coordinator, uh, and they start bringing like yeah, I don't know um, their tight end coach now. He was here before, but say he's the run anyway. They build their staff like that, like we talked about earlier. They build it off of who they know. Um, yeah, it, it would be, but then you go back to the fact that okay now. What happens when we lose Ken Dorsey, right? So, as in, like, if Ken, we have so much success, someone's going to take him, yeah. right? So, as important as developing your players in your building, if you're uh, Ted Phillips, if you're George McCaskey, is in developing coaches, 
right? And you have to be able to recognize when you have a coaching building. Like in 2019 when they fired coaches, uh, Vic Fangio left, I think, in 2018. I heard from a ton of people in the building. Like that was another fascinating thing about the whole interview from George. Like we don't want to talk to players because – former players because they won't know where the line is. Like, George, like, we talk to everybody in the building. Like, yeah. What the hell are you talking about? Like, mm-hmm. it's just nonsense. Like, we know where the line, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know if you know how many people in your building actually talk to us, George. Like, obviously you don't. But um, it's, br- people told me, I got from three or four different people in the building, Olin, this Brandon Staley guy. Like, he's a ball coach. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, why, why won't they keep him? And they were like, well, he wants to stay because he has a young family. They're in here, you know, Lake Forest is a beautiful place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I live up there. It's a, you know, Disneyland up there, but um, he, they didn't, they let him go. They brought in Pagano and brought in Monachino. Monachino was his guy. So that is a problem, right? Mm-hmm. Like, do you yeah. recognize when you have a coach? So I'm all for any structure they bring, but you have to be constantly developing because what you want to become is the team that everybody wants your guys. Yeah, Everybody yeah. wants your system. And you have to recognize that if we do become that team, well, who's next? Yeah, you got to keep those. Right, guys. Who, who's my next D coordinator? Who's my next D line coach? Who's my next uh, uh, offensive coordinator? If, say, Ken, like uh, Carl's talking about Ken Dorsey gets picked up and, and they become your man, he did have great success. Like, I don't mind that. I just worry about losing the system. Andy I worry Reed, about losing Bill the coach. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you see it? The, the structure is funnels up right to the head and, honcho yeah. and, and they don't mind and they, they want that. you to take their guy yeah yeah because we want to give that next guy that i'm developing a chance for yeah. sure right like that's, that's a what great they problem want. to have yeah the yeah. more sure. the more we have these conversations though the more you realize too about how much the work ethic is just crucial like you said if you're not six hours ahead you're behind yep right. and that's what it reminds me when bo polini was in here and he was telling a story about how he told belichick to go you know i, I got like this db in there he was at youngstown at the time so you know d1 double a and he said by the time he went on a flight before yeah. he told him he said by the time they landed bill had already watched three games had scouted him out and yeah. like, gave him reports back about and this right. guy was like a late rounder like maybe undrafted free agent and yeah. it's like you wonder why for bill the is next he, year for the, yeah, yeah, right. for the next year yes. so he wasn't even in that draft he was going to be in the draft the year <laughs> yeah. after so like you wonder how so, like, bill and the patriots are what they are it's like they he puts a lot of fucking work in right and i think the most important thing if the bears will do it if somebody in the building will do it it's, it's not hard to figure out i think the most important thing to do is this study your history study what has been your problems over and over again and then you got to fix those and you got to watch for them to pop up again. Yep. And like you said, like for to do that in football, to get in front of people, it takes hours. Mm-hmm. But nowadays, I mean, it's, it's not like, gosh, you're paying these people a good amount of money to do a job. You just, you just got to do the job and you got to find when people say leader, uh, they're really just saying problem solver, right? Mm-hmm. A guy who solves problems who has people believe in them, who like, if, if I make you better at something, you're gonna listen to the things I say, Yep. right? Like that's what you, like in the NFL, it's not about yelling and screaming and people don't wanna be screamed at, everybody's a man. I, I will follow you if you make, you make me better. If you help, if you, I sh- okay, if I do what this guy says, we win football games, cool. Yeah. If I do what this guy says, I seem to get my second contract that I've been wanting, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'll listen to him. That's that's the leader. Like the leader isn't like something like uh, he gets up every day and he screams at people and uh, uh, oh, I'm gonna be a leader today. Like those guys usually don't make it. Like okay, <laughs> you yep. need to shut up. Like you know what I mean. So yeah. that's what they have to. But you know, the Bill Bill Polian hires somebody. Bill Polian doesn't really know what your problems are. Bill Polian's not gonna be in the building every day after that. So the coach needs help. Yeah. Who does he go see? Well, the, the guy who told you, the guy who he goes sees told you when they come see him, he's very uncomfortable. And, and I, the big thing I've heard, I don't know and, and if you could say it or not, the big thing I heard about Ryan Pace is he was just really a guy who lacked conviction. Like he was always looking like, ah, like, you know, he was just kind of like an indecisive guy. So Yeah, yeah I, like, I never was in a day-to-day yeah. where he was the boss. Yeah. Right? I was never there uh, for that. I, you know, when I was in New Orleans, Mickey Loomis was the boss. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't indecisive at all. So. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't know that. Yeah, yeah, you know, I wouldn't know that firsthand. But if that if that was what he was like, that's a problem. Yeah, mm-hmm. big time. Well, Olin, man, uh, thanks for stopping in. I know we talked about this weeks ago, and it just so happened you came yeah. in when shit hits the fans. So. We we make these T-shirts that say "Sell the team" on it and Bears logo. Can we interested in one of those? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't want to wear like "Sell the team" because <laughs> yeah. because there is still an older lady there who I know, you don't yeah, want yeah. to show yeah. some respect for. But um, I don't blame you guys. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like it feels like. Uh, all these years, you haven't taken the time to learn the game 
that's provided for your for a life for your family it just doesn't make any sense to mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Yep. And what's up with that? Before we go, what's up with James and everyone there? Uh, so he's going to Illinois. I just James looked, is going yeah, to Illinois. Yeah. yeah. James uh-huh. is going to Illinois. It was. Uh, it was. It was. Uh, it was. You know, James ended up. You know, obviously with the pandemic, and they had that shortened year. Um, he had, the first two games, I told him, I said, James, like you'll be lucky if you play at like North Dakota State. Like he wasn't playing great football, right? Yeah. Uh, then he went on a roll, man, and ended up like Catholic. I've heard he's a fucking animal <laughs> in his mind. Yeah, <laughs> but, but he's got a long way to go. You know, he's got like and he knows, his older brother's there already. So mm-hmm. for our family, like obviously we're, we're we're all Illinois now. I got to see with Coach Belmont. That was that was fun, man. But um, James was like a. a um, like he had no offers, right? Zero offers. Uh, ended up like Catholic school league player of the year in all state and all. He had a good year, uh, and Bill called like the last day and said, "I have one for him." So Damn, he was super awesome. excited. It was, that's you know, awesome. it was a good, good deal. He worked hard at it. So, uh, but but like like they, I tell him and his brother now, like now the work starts. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. now now you got to get there, and obviously like college football is a huge jump, man. It really oh, is, yeah. right? And mm-hmm. his older brother found that out this year. And has a lot to improve on, right? Has a lot. Like, holy shit! I didn't. I'm shocked how strong these guys are. Yeah, well, welcome, welcome to the jungle, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 Everybody yeah. thinks they want to do this until you're actually yeah. doing it, and there's monsters in front of you, right? So uh, they got a long way to go. But yeah, James is there, Josh is there, so uh, it's gonna be fun. Awesome. Man. I uh, I'm a Northwestern fan. I know you probably have a pretty decent relationship with Fitz. Mm-hmm. Talk me off the ledge. Are they gonna be all right? Yeah, I, I think Fitz. I think Fitz is. We talked about what the Bears need. I think in college at Northwestern, Fitz is that. I think he problem solves. I think they have to get used to the portal there. Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I think they have to get used to that part. But I think Fitz will adjust. He'll adjust mm-hmm. to what needs to be done there. And he always, it seems like you think they're out of it. And all of a sudden, they're in the playoffs. You yeah. know, I don't know. You know, he's just a good football coach, smart guy. They had him at like plus five hundred odds for the Bears job. I thought that was bananas. Well, for, he's he said that's the one job he would leave for. I think they'd probably have to go to a Rose Bowl, and then after that, he's done his job at Northwestern, left an indelible footprint there, and then maybe the Bears job. I don't. I, I see him as Northwestern. How old is he now? Forty five. It probably about your age. I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you got kids. <laughs> Playing yeah, football, together, football so. together. Yeah, his son is a good tight end. I, I've, I've, yeah. He's big a kid. fucking monster. Yeah, he's a monster. Yeah. He's yeah. going to be a senior next year? Yeah, or senior he, next year. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Yeah. And then where, where can people find you? You got the podcast with Jason, and then he, obviously you're out Yeah, we got the uh, – it's called the No Name Football Podcast because uh, – was it, we had Tony Wise was our first guest. I had to have old crusty Tony Wise, my own line <laughs> coach, as our first guest. We've been having a blast with it, but uh, he was like, I was like, we have no name, and he's like, that's your name. Yeah. But I was thinking about changing it to a grain of salt. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, yeah. We'll see what happens here. Grain of salt. We've had a lot of good interviews on this yeah, show, and this was as good as any of them, yeah, probably better. You. I mean, just the. I mean, breaking down the game and like how it works from behind the scenes, the shit that we can't see as fans. It was. Fantastic. You want to do this every Monday next year? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I appreciate it. Fun coming, man. I appreciate it, guys. You guys got me. I uh, just gave me something to do this morning, so I appreciate there it. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks again, all. We appreciate no problem, it. guys. So that's all on Croots. That's uh, that's fucking awesome conversation. Incredible, man. Like I said, like you, you grew up as a lineman in Chicago. Like he was the guy. You know, he was like he was just who all your coaches would mm-hmm. have you look up to, and he was just uh, honestly just for any Bears fan, he he's the best. And just to hear him speak so candidly of the organization, and to kind of hear how he's been treated was was fucked up. But um, it's it's awesome to get him in here and a great perspective on what's going on in Chicago. It sucks though. It's not one of those things you want to hear. It, it's just and it's. I said this the other day but it's like we had about like four hours of optimism around the bears where it's like we're excited they're making changes and then it's like well the problems are still going to be the problems and and that whole thing with Olman is just like another layer of the dysfunction of that organization it's tough it's tough to hear because it just it sucks all the hope like right out of your bones i understand that having great relations with some former players or you know, guys come and go in the league, but it's like there's a standard here with Olin. Like, if you can't fucking like trust and listen and love this guy, even if he was hard to fucking coach and manage, and he could be tough at, at times around the facility and stuff, that guy lives and breathes the organization. Yeah. And I think anybody who has any say in personnel around NFL would fucking kill to have his character around a team on a consistent basis. So now here we are. He's you know he's retired. He's getting older. We're fucking. You know, we're in the next generation of Chicago Bears. They just have no respect for the guy. Yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah. Tough. It really and is. he still has respect 
for the organization as a whole. Oh, how about you know? that? Like, I, that's, yeah. that's, that was like a, almost like a, what a mature way to think yep. about it. And especially for a competitive guy who's fucking ready to knock your block off right. at like a moment's notice to be like, wait a second, these guys don't represent yeah. the Bears. Me and my former players, I love him calling out the fucking equipment guy. Mm -hmm. You know, like him him naming the guys yeah. that make the Bears. And, and uh, even the, the level of respect for Virginia McCaskey too. You know, end, where he yeah, was at the end where I was kind of joking with him, like, you want to sell the team shirt? And he goes, no, because, I, you know, they got the, the nice old, the nice lady there. So it's tough. It's not impossible, though. It's not impossible. We've seen this before with the Bears. Like, it is not impossible for the Bears to win 12 games in a season. It's not impossible. Yeah. I guess they just have to, it seems like they have to absolutely hit a home run on both of these big hires. So. When was the last time the Bears made the playoffs in back-to-back -back years? Um, it was in uh, – when they went to the Super Bowl, 04, 05, 05, 06. Yep, correct. And they got fucking waxed by Steve Smith. Any names? I mean, I, we got a little bit into it with with Olin, I'm sure. I, I well, number one is you need a GM. You know, clearing like, yeah, away like, before yeah, the come on. Coach. So like, of course, Omar Khan from the Steelers. Like, Steelers are a great organization. Yeah, like, I, I've always wondered, like, that was, like, the comparison that you always want to draw. Like, these two, like, kind of royal families of the original, like, the Roonies and the McCaskies and slash Hallises. They're, like, light years different. Light years. So, like, I wonder, like, I love the idea of, of bringing in a guy from the Steelers, but I think he might get here and be like, well, this isn't how it's supposed to be, you know? The Steelers also just, where they're coming off 18 years of Big Ben. I do, I do think that gets overlooked when we talk about the Steelers only losing seven games once in like the last 20 years. Yeah, but I, I agree with you. But if he's going to be the guy, he's the guy. Like you said, he's not reporting to nobody. So if that's not how it's run, it's his fucking job to get things in order. That's why you need one of these head coaches that has served as a GM before, I think. Like, I know Gruden's off the table, but, like, well, you need a guy who's like, dude, I'll fucking coach, I'll do the, I'll do all that stuff, and then still give that guy a GM to kind of follow his orders or maybe maybe some type of – I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I, I hate that model. You're the, saying an, a DG, like a duel, or you're saying – Yeah, like – That's the Belichick model. Because, yeah, but there's one Bill Belichick. Because they can't, be but clear. the Bears don't have any – internal leadership to rely on other than Ted Phillips, right? Just like, okay, so Ted's our number one guy. And if you, and if it sounds like if you bring in a head coach and a GM the way the Bears are going to, like you're not going to bring these guys in together, it sounds like there could be some internal competition amongst each other. Right, and that's why that, the only reason – like, I, I think it's a failed idea, by the way. Yeah, I well, I think if, if they went that direction where they're going to hire the coach first, well, that coach better be the GM too. Like that's that's kind of my point. Like if you if you love Brian Flores or you love yeah, Jim Harbaugh, but I don't think we, we. I just don't like that at all. Look, like, it's like for instance, like I think Bill O'Brien's a good leader, but mm -hmm. when he took over as GM, the fucking text is just tanked. Yeah, he was horrendous, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. horrendous. I agree. You know, yeah. Um, that brings me to uh, Rick Smith. A lot of people like him. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. He he's. He's famous for giving, um, you know, for really building up those teams, A, and then B. Like, I, I can never get over that Osweiler deal, but, yeah. I mean, every GM is going to have one, you know, bad signing or two. Mm -hmm. but, um, I don't know, man. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see what kind of route they go. And um, whoever ultimately Bill Polian says is the guy is going to be the guy. So who knows what Bill Polian has up his sleeve. Well, you Boy. say that with the smirk on his face. Bill Polian, uh, I don't know. I heard some good stuff about Bill Pauline that I like. No, liked. I have nothing against him, but I'm just saying I do. Like, that's accurately what I, it Can is. I give you two things that I heard that I really liked about him? Okay. On two separate occasions. Like, yeah, he drafted Peyton Manning, and that was a slam dunk. But he also put, like, huge awesome pieces around Peyton Manning to, like, mm -hmm. revolutionize the offense. And he did the same thing with the Bills in the 90s where he basically created the, the fucking hurry-up, run-and-go system. So it's not like he is mm -hmm. historically archaic, run the ball, play a 3-4. No, nope, not like, at he all. He is traditionally in his peer group considered like forward thinking the problem is in his peer group now is he's 79, 79 years, years old, old and he hasn't worked in football in over a decade like what like there has to be somebody better than that that you can hire as a consultant like i just i'm sorry like that guy and like he did he did a pre, i think he did a pretty good job building the expansion panthers too where he got them you know to the i think it was the nfc championship within their second year like i think he put that roster together and so like he has like a very good resume but nothing in the last 30 years or 20 years. So like he, the, the Colts fired him, like the Colts fired him at the end. And cause I think they went like two and 14, like his last year or something like that. So it's just like, 
I think that his time in the sun has is over. And when they first announced that signing, I was like, okay, like it's better than just George and Ted doing it. But then they um, they brought in they did the same thing the last round, which I forgot. They brought in Ernie Acorsi. Uh, He's better than Ernie Acorsi, though. Ernie Acorsi, but he but same like model, a guy yeah, who's been yeah, out yeah, of yeah. it for so a listen, while. I'm not saying it's fucking. Yeah, I'm Ernie not saying Acorsi, it's, like he built the Giants. It's up, far like, from it's far yeah. from ideal. He it's won far from ideal. Bill, I'll give Bill Polian credit. He won NFL Executive of the Year six times in three different decades. Awesome. Anything in this decade? <laughs> Twelve years ago. Yeah. No, I mean it's better than nothing, but it's just like I, I didn't hear that name. I was like, okay, like we're in good hands. You know, like I just it was just like, oh, here we go. Like they have to outsource every single fucking decision and we're gonna end up right back where we were. And I got into like an internet beef with people, um, because I, I do think like the the Bears job, given everything might be the least attractive job available because the most important thing to a head coach is job security. You have an owner that is 99 years old. A coach is going to get a, a probably a four year deal coach and GM four year deal to, to come here. Right. Mm, yeah. You know, like not to be morbid and I'm not hoping it happens or anything, but like Virginia, like the odds that she's here. So then, then, the McCaskies don't have the majority share. They have. Did you know that Virginia had eleven children? Do you know that? It's a lot. It's a lot of kids. To and the best we got is George out of that lot. Well, they and then they split the shares among the eleven, and then some people want to sell and some people don't. You might, you know, the board loves George McCaskey, which I think is just Virginia. But as soon as that's gone, you might have Pat Ryan. You might have a, uh, some outside ownership, and then that guy's going to want to like reshape the organization in their way. And so if I'm a coach and it's like I either, I have a short window here with Justin Fields on a rookie quarterback in this aging defense where like you don't have the 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 luxury of a long runway to get this thing turned around. And I just think there's so much uncertainty and you have these buffoons that have been making the same decisions for 22 fucking years now with Ted Phillips. I think the Bears are in a very difficult spot. I don't know how attractive that job is. And it's still know, there's still only 32. of them. I understand that. That's, that's, but if you're going for, you know, pick a sexy name like. Yeah. Like the, the tier one guys who have control over their destiny. Yeah. Are in a position to look at the Bears job and say, nah, I can do better right. than this. The only thing that pulls me back is when you talk about these guys, I think ego has to be a primary consideration. Like mm -hmm. your ego and your competitive and the reason you are in these positions is you bet on yourself Great your point. whole life. So when yep. you get to the point to be like, hey, you succeed as, as the Bears head coach, fucking Mike Dicka is mm -hmm. like legendarily yeah, considered one of the like most iconic coaches in the NFL. Now there's better coaches and all that shit, but like iconic tied to a franchise for his life. It's him. Hall, like whatever, that's fucking Mike fucking Dicka. And just using this as an example, if I was a coach and I'm trying to make a name for myself or a career, like th this is the biggest. Yeah. Other than like, what's a bigger NFL job? Cowboys? Giants. Maybe. I mean, Giants. Giants is just as big as Bears. Yeah. It you're the head coach of the Giants. You're head coach of Bears. I put the Cowboys maybe a tick above it, like a slight yeah. tick above it. But, I, I mean, the Giants have just had, like, they don't have this perceived or not instability at the ownership level, at the executive level. And people don't like John Mara now, but, like, that guy's won two Super Bowls in the last 15 years. And they went to one in 2000, and they, you know, 86 and 91. So it's like the Giants are pretty – they're, they've had a rough go here since the fucking boat day, but they've been more consistently good and great than the Bears ever. Well, let's, you wrote a good blog about this. Let's talk about it. Like, right? Did or, I? Or did you approach it on Twitter? It was more of a Twitter. I'll probably get back to it today. But. Okay, because like you you had basically said in the short term the Bears are probably more they have attractive, mo but yes. in the long term the Giants would be a better job because of draft capital. Like, do you think the coaches are looking at the Bears job and being like, oh, the picks aren't good? Or do you I, think they're already looking at like Justin Fields and I, the fact that like, we don't have we don't have any leadership in the right. building for them to contend with? They're basically you're getting the keys to the Chicago Bears. Yeah, I think you're also basing that heavily on the pick situation, which does matter for sure. Mm -hmm. But their cap situation is not good either. Yeah, but I think if you're going in and you're sitting down with Mara or their their cap situation, the Giants' cap situation is horrendous. Yes, but I think if you're going in and you're a coach and your number one thing is job security, which it is for every single coach. 
and you can say, hey, like I need a five year deal because it's going to take me at least three to untangle all this bullshit. And so, you know, and the bullshit being, you know, Daniel Jones, not the guy, all the, t- the terrible cap situation. So then it's like, OK, like I want a big deal to be the Giants coach. And, and you say, like, hey, you're a mess and I, I'm coming in and I want to fix it. But it's a mess right now. And I think you have more runway than you do with the Bears with Khalil Max, you know, 30. Uh, Robert Quinn's on the other side of 30. Uh, Eddie Jackson looks terrible. But he's signed long term. You got to, you know, you got to pay Roquan. But, you know, they have so many like the defense is getting older and older. And you, your window is really like right now because you're as soon as you need to pay. Let's hope that they have to pay Justin Fields because he turns out to be awesome. Right when you have to pay him is when you're going to need more money to fix the defense. And you're just like, I'm already like, maybe I'm just my brain is fucked because we've seen this cycle of like, OK, the offense is pretty good for a little stretch with Cutler. But yeah. then the defense is falling apart and then the defense is really good again. But we got Tr- Trubisky. And before that, the defense was great. And we had Olin in here saying he snapped it to 17 different quarterbacks. Like, I feel like that for that reason, like the Giants job, if you are given the runway to really do a full rebuild, you have that luxury where the Bears, I just don't think that you're, that you ha- it's just not there. Because like you said, it's it's kind of turnkey in a way. Like you have a quarterback that they've invested in, you have some other pieces, and you ha- you're locked into these contracts, these big contracts on of these star players on defense where it's, you okay, here you go, make the best of it. I think the right guys can make this defense actually Agre- pretty good next year. I, I would agree. I, I, I do think yeah. so. And, I mean, that's assuming Robert Quinn comes back and plays as well as he did and that Khalil Mack is healthy. And, you know, you're going to need Goldman to bounce back. You're mm-hmm. going to need Eddie Jackson. to. I, I don't, that's, I what don't, I'm, that's what I'm least promised about. But you're going to need him to play decent, which I think is like uh, – could uh, could be an ass. But, if you you know, you find someone to shore up that other side, that other corner, that other safety, I think the def- – I think like a good general manager could make the Bears a top 12 defense. Okay. Top ten D. Where did they finish this year? Even I have to check. I, I I do think that though. But and do we like Sean Desai? Right. I don't know. I, or is that up to the head coach? I mean, I think he's. I think he's done. Okay. I do you think, think he done. would? Do you think he would? Uh, let's get crazy and say it is Harbaugh, and yeah. Harbaugh brings in Vic. Do you think Desai would take a reduced role or associate defensive coordinator or something like that? Because he they they played well. I would say the defense. They got they got better as the year went along. I'll agree with that. Yeah, I at least that's how I feel. I'm sure if someone put data in front of me and it was different. I yeah, but it, it felt like yeah. you know as we went down. I mean, obviously part the, of it could be the schedule. The too, schedule but, at the end was pretty. Yeah, um, I don't let me know. See here, just pulled up points. Also, his game. first year as a D coordinator, I really I don't think people give enough credit to like the learn learning as you go in the NFL because there how many times is there like coaches have bad starts or they like get a second chance and they do well or Belichick fired right. from Cleveland. I mean, um, I don't know. It's it just like I I really want a guy. I don't want to take. I don't want a, a coach who's getting their first head coaching job with this team. Like I like that's kind yeah. of where I've settled now. Where I'd rather have a guy that has experience, has learned from mistakes, has, has shown that he can have success, and the guy that checks all those boxes. And I know people are, he's very polarizing, it's Harbaugh. And I'm not saying like he's like the greatest, but he did, 49ers hadn't made the playoffs in eight years. He comes in, they go to three straight NFC championships. He's turned Michigan around. He, you know, he's got Stanford into a top, he got Stanford into a New Year's Six Bowl. And like he, I, I, like, I don't think it, I don't think it's gonna happen, but I think it, the, it has to start there. 22nd, our defense finish in points per game this year. Mm. Okay. I, I think that unit could be a top, maybe top 10 unit. I yeah. Mean, and like, not like top five, but yeah. like maybe in the, How many games the 9 through 12 miss? range. How many? Missed, I think he, what, missed the last five, maybe? Yeah. Something so. like that. Like, there's there's potential there, man. Yep. Like I said, like you got to you gotta really know. It'll be interesting to see what the new GM does because like the cap is going up, and I think I saw somewhere the Bears will have like they – We'll have forty-four million dollars in cap space, and they but they need to sign like twenty guys to fill out a roster. So it'll be interesting to see like how they sprinkle that around and what they can do because they need they need more guys. Yeah, if, if the core that's what I'm talking about. The core of that defense is pretty close, right? And that's, and that's what like you know that's if you're talking optimism, like if you just gotta get someone that can run an offense and just literally not have the worst offense in the NFL like we've seen the last couple of years. Yeah. I don't know, man. They could they they could be better. They could get competitive, and um, 
you know, then we're one year closer to some of those contracts expiring. I, it's yeah. I don't know. I there's, think yeah, like you had, but do you agree that there's a, sm- a sh- much shorter, or there's a short window here for a guy who comes in? I think. I I don't necessarily agree with that. No. Okay. I think I don't get me wrong. I I understand that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand your points as well. But um, if things are trending the right way and someone takes it over, like you see that. No, I I just I I think that like you could I think the Bears could be a a relic like I don't know if they can unless Justin Fields is just really fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. I do think there is like some bizarre world where, like Fields turns into a top ten quarterback, and the core of that defense is still good. But that core of the defense is Hicks, who's old, and he says he wants to stay, but who knows? Ro, or, uh, Roquan, who's awesome and young. And then you got the ends. It's Quinn and Mac. So if, if those guys are all, like, still around, like, that's that's the, sp- the spine of your defense. Like, you have enough pieces that you can cobble together what you say, a top 12. Yeah. So you And, and we're, like, dude, they, they couldn't get off the field in that Cleveland game. Like, yep. there were so many times where – they just were let down by their offense, and it's just, you know, yeah. there was nothing that they could have done. So, um, ultimately, that's, I don't know, that's my glass half full, but it's just going to take someone good to get in there. I think that's the first it's glass strong. half full it's we've ever gotten. It's going to take someone really strong. And I get about no one else is half half full in this city. At I'm this not point right either. now. But, uh, but that's because, like, I'm not surprised, man. Like, I you heard me, and, like, I took a lot of shit on this show for what I said last summer about how, like, it, this is what I expected. And I was pretty much right, I feel. Yep. You know, like, how would, much of a disaster it was going to be. Because mm-hmm. it was. Um, so I'm not surprised. And now it's uh, – I'm just happy Nagy and Pace are gone. So Yeah. Um, and I know people are going to say, well, why do you have confidence in the next people being good? I don't. But mm-hmm. you just, like, you don't have a choice – being a fan of this team other than to live by the you know the mantra of a broken clock is right two times a day and that's that's all i got yeah i really hope if i'm gonna be a glass half full guy the defense like you said can rebound and then it really comes down to for me are larry borum and tevin jenkins legit nfl starters and that's what's hard that's what's hard is because how do you go into next season that's what this general manager he is limited film to work with, obviously, for yep. Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borum. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a tough decision is do you sign someone or do you give these guys a chance? Because that is a season-breaking decision. Yeah. It truly is. Right. That's a season-breaking decision. That could be it, and that could be a Justin Fields-breaking decision too. Like yeah. That's the type, like that's what I mean. Like there, There is, like to me with the Bears, it's an inside straight. You know, like you're, 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 you, you flop 2-7, but you have like a couple things there where it might work out. And it, it, but it, it uh, everything kind of has to go like perfect. I feel like, and it's it, it's hard for me to envision a scenario where it goes perfect just because. It why? Doesn't. Why would you? Right. Why would you? I get it. I get it. Um, developing situation. Stay tuned on that. Another news and note: we we're moving back to one episode a week for Redline Radio now that the Bears season has concluded. This show we should have said this off the top. The shows will be out on Wednesday now after we record them. Mm. Set a Thursday morning, so like Wednesday afternoon mm-hmm. release. Um, and then the other thing, John Lester retired today, and uh, it's it's stupid. He retires as a St. Louis Cardinal, so let's get that out of the way. The Cubs obviously could have brought him back last year. Obviously, the, like the fact they didn't and they didn't pay him any money, and then they went out and put up the worst pitching staff in the National League or somewhere close to it, worst starting pitching for sure. Mm-hmm. It's just fucking trash. And Tom Ricketts will get off the hook on this, and no one will fucking blade Jem Hoyer because it got lumped in with all these other moves. But it's absolute trash that the best free agent signing, the guy who is instrumental in bringing the World Series home, is going to retire as St. Louis Cardinal when the Cubs had every fucking like hand to play to bring him back and do something nice for him. They didn't. They suck. And it's just a fucking travesty. I've already forgotten he played for the Cardinals. It's out. It's off. It didn't really happen. It didn't. I, it, do you think? Do you feel like it did? It did because it's like one of those things where he made starts against us. I know. And it was like he was wearing the Cardinals uniform. And there's no sense of pride. The fact that there's no sense of pride from the Cubs where they're like, we can't let that happen. I mean, now, granted, it's not Anthony Rizzo, you know, but it's it's like a guy who's instrumental to the most successful era of the Chicago Cubs. And yeah. the, there's no, like, modicum of fucking competitiveness in our front office of like, no, we're not going to let you fucking losers enjoy John Lester. This is our guy. 
And it didn't even matter. We're talking about pennies on the fucking dollar here to bring him back. So congratulations to John Lester on a great career, though. He is not a Hall of Famer. Oh. So he's just not. I mean, you can people can say what they would like, but um, he never dominated, like, full major league seasons for numbers of years. He's yeah. awesome in October. He's very reliable at the top of his pitching staff. He was, like, a quote-unquote ace the Cubs needed. Mm -hmm. But, like, historically in his career – He's like the best number two in a regular season you could ask for. He's a fucking lights out guy to take a ball in a, in a playoff series. He can start a game one, a playoff series. But like Clayton Kershaw's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. You know, like Justin Verland. Like that's what I'm saying. Hall of Famers are guys that get on the mound. You're just like, holy fuck, look at this guy. Yeah. I wonder if he could get in like, um, and maybe it's not the perfect comparison, but like Terry Bradshaw. You know, like, I don't think anybody, like, if you're yeah, picking up. He could out be your, a veterans committee guy down yeah, the road where it's you know, like, well, he, he like ended he two curses. Won, you know, yeah. Or he wasn't on the 0-14. But, but he but won three, right? Didn't he yeah, he won 0-7, 13, 13 and, and, and he basically 16. won the 13 title himself. Yeah. He was, was, he, he was MVP, electric. wasn't he? Yeah, I think yeah, so. so. Him or Ortiz. Yeah. As Coach Boone said to Coach Yost, you're Hall of Fame in my book. <laughs> <laughs> He's Hall of Fame in your book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, would you fly a, a 31 up there? No. No, I'm not putting a 31 No, no? No. There's already a 30. Like, I think he's the greatest. Well, I mean, there is already 31s up there, Fergie and Craig. Yeah. Um, Fergie, Fergie Jenkins follows me on Twitter now after that whole Aussie thing. Wants to come, why? Wants to come to the bar. He's and, been on the show. Yeah. Well, yeah I think for he, six minutes. He wants, yeah. to, he wants to come into the office, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll work on getting Fergie Jenkins in. And uh, But I would say that he is the greatest free agent signing and like, sure yeah like it's marion like, hosa yeah, it's, it's a cage the, the, match between him and hosa those are the two it's a cage yeah match. but i think that lester had more pressure and i do think it meant more like hosa like he was the like the final piece or i feel like lester was kind of almost like the first piece in a way yeah when you we know? were getting good it would be like if they signed hosa when taze and kane in 08 Right. So exactly. So like the Hawks had already made the conference finals without Hosa, and then they signed him that summer, and it's like, wow, it's a fucking wrap. Yeah, the, you're talking about our Jason Hayward. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. After we made it to the, and then I'll see us. We needed to go get our Hayward. Right. Uh, yeah. Hosa, we got our Hayward. Yeah. So um, if if Lester does get in the Hall of Fame, it's it's Veterans Committee stuff. I I don't. Maybe if they they should have a, a secondary or, or tertiary kind of like honoring system for players because he doesn't get a statue you know those those are those are for the guys that spend their entire careers mm -hmm. with the cubs and go down as fucking legends um it'll be interesting to see if they do a statue for rizzo or if they do a statue for the 2016 team which hopefully you don't because you've competed in one more world series but if like john lester's memorialized it would i shouldn't say memorial but yeah if he's like recognized in perpetuity around wrigley I think a statue would be too far, yeah. flying his numbers too much. But they got, if they figured out a way to do, like, you what, know, a what, bust or something. What or, about, a, like, a mural somewhere? Yeah, it'd be nice. Like, because that pitching staff is probably, like, for me, like, I love everything about, like, going Lester, Arietta, Hendricks. Like, that to me is, like, those are my guys. Yeah, that's a perfect – Yeah. It's a perfect mix. I, I think Arietta probably lost his – Juice with the Cubs and um, I know, I know, but like, fuck that though. I love that him, fucking he that was, season and a half he had. He was unbelievable. Like the best. Yeah, it's I, I, it's better. It was better than when Derrick Rose went on his run in in 2010 11. It was on when you know yeah. you're like, yo, did you watch Derrick Rose? Did you see the dunk he had on Phoenix last night? Like you just every it seemed like every day for months in a row it was like, yo, did you see what Derrick Rose did last night? And so the fact that yeah, Arietta did that for a year and a half. Yeah, he he was. I love that. I just love that staff. I love that staff. I remember, like, you know, during that Giants series and, like, Hendricks, you know, like, it, it was – I those three, like, I'll go to war with those three guys every – you know, like, that's, like, the, that's like they're your bulldog, but they're all just, like, a little bit different, like, perfectly different, but also, like, I loved that staff. Stays are over. Yeah. 177 the era. <laughs> you know the problem with the good days is you don't know they're the good days till they're gone yeah you know yeah. like you, you're living in it you're like yeah we're fucking awesome and it's like i just didn't you just like don't know how quickly and abruptly it's gonna end it seems like so long ago and that's more so um enhanced in sports like you, you know the good days in your life like you know like college like hey i got you this is a four-year contract yep <laughs> yeah usually yep. yeah um you know <laughs> like with the sports team it's like 
that's why like we you know our friend white Sox dave he's doing a uh is on the guest list podcast right now so he's not in here right now that's why i'm so shocked by him having such a sense of calmness with the white Sox. And I get last year because it was really their first appearance from yeah. the COVID year side. But he's vacillated on that, even on this show. Remember when he like he would get so mad when they weren't signing people, and then it's like yeah. as soon as opening day starts, he kind of relaxes on that. But the thing was, but before the playoffs, like when the one hundred eight guys came in here and Ken WO, like he was like, "No, nah, it's fine. Look, we'll be back." And I'm like, Phew. "Yeah, it, it can yeah, be, like you're not mad if you lose. You should be mad because that's yeah. what we thought. Remember with the Cubs in 08 and 09? Yes, sir. And Soriano, we were just like, "Oh, yes, dude, sir. we're fucking, we're not going anywhere." I yep. mean, if you told me oh, th- in dude, oh, June three, of man. June of 15 that the Hawks would it's never win a playoff series with Taves and Kane over the next eight years I'd, I'd like laugh in your face and that like it can it can disappear like a snap of a finger like overnight so I spent most of the offseason after the Bears Eagles loss being like whatever dude this fucking they'll be better next Same year thing, like how dude. do they not yeah, get yeah. better right because you would you would this think this defense still fucking awesome right. Mitch can't be as bad as he was last year. Yep. Like, you know, the, this and it. I they get rem- another year under the system. I yes. remember being like, he only has to get incrementally better. Yes. Like, just, That's all it just was. A, like 1% in that, you know, 1% Didn't better, happen. and they're in the Super Bowl. What about, uh, so then I guess let's just package this up for a second. Does this change the way you think about the Bulls right now? Is there more of an urgency to be like, all right, this let's let's get like that? I do feel like, all right, let's let's push for finals this year. Then, like, like as fans, let's sit and watch and hope. And like as they're going through the trade deadline, they're saying maybe they move Kobe. Like, I want to buy in and be like, dude, let's go. I said this weeks ago. It's like, what, 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 what? Why not sixty fucking wins? And like they're on pace for 58, 59. 60 is just so much. I think the I know. Bulls are oh, an yeah. entirely different constructed Let's team, go. though. Yeah. You know, like the fucking 2008 Bear, 2018 Bears, like that was in the same thing. 2010 Hawks, like that was like they were still young. You know, you mm-hmm. were still – you had time to really lock in like that. Like, you know, Ro- Rosen, he's on the back end. I don't want to say the back end, but he's in the prime to the back end. You know, mm-hmm. he's in like the – the, the like final in two third, years, final third of the race. Yeah, like in two years, if he was like looked completely different, you wouldn't be shocked. He yeah. gets his buckets all like an old man, so that's why I like. Him. But I mean, he's thirty two, and they can trade for or they can sign Jokic in two years. Yeah, yeah, oh, I know. A lot of people oh, are yeah. saying that's fucking yeah. for sure. You know, so it's like it's just constructed. Like if this was like if they were all three years younger, oh, then yeah. it would be like. Mm-hmm. So now that they, you're right. Now that they are older. It's, I don't know, man. It's a tough situation, and I was gonna say if there was bit of one bit of silver lining again, do you want me to keep going glass half full? Yeah, I on. love glass the half full. The fucking Reinsdorf figured it out, and they were fucking morons too when it came to the Bulls for a long time. Yeah. So McCaskey, you're next. <sighs> yes. But like that's the type. So like I know like the Hawks are going through this same thing where they're restructuring, they're looking for the next guy. Like they went out and hired the best consultant possible. Mm-hmm. And they've talked to the Cubs about building a you know a, a baseball ops. Like they've talked to Jed, they've talked to Theo, they've talked to uh, you know like you don't hear that. Like they, they're trying to pull ideas from everywhere. Like how do we get this thing going as best as possible, as quickly as possible, and build it in a first class way? Because that like they paper mache over all their issues because they were so fucking good. But like there was like a, this cancer bubbling under the surface with the Hawks for a long time. And um, and they would say, hey, like we're gonna kind of tear down and like go get and just build it and take our time. And I know the Bears don't necessarily have like the same luxury of time, but I like that. You know, it, it scares me that they're not, you know, trying to get ideas from everywhere and like that. You just, I want new blood in the Bears at the very top, and it's just we don't get that. He trusts Ted implicitly. Yeah, you trust Ted, implicitly. and that's what you even hear about, like having your friend, your brain trust being behind the eight ball is and that's one thing like you don't realize it until it's gone like it's crazy how fast that happens too yeah like we've heard stuff about how far behind the cubs are oh yeah and like how whoa like how did theo let that happen right but he's been around so long mm-hmm. and he's already fucking old guard you know yeah so it, it's it's wild that's actually a very good point that they are it's wild like people are taking being more take people have taken more risks where the Cubs have just been comfortable. Like, oh, we have what we're doing. It's figured out. But then other people compete, and they look at it, and they're like, we can do better. Alan Kurtz brought that up about yep. working out. I mm-hmm. love that point of him. Where mm-hmm. He's like, yo, if people aren't doing that, then you need to do that. 
Yeah. So good luck to the Bears in the search. God knows it sounds like they fucking need all the luck they can get. Yep. Yeah. Last little note from me, Lucas Reichel got called up. He'll probably play in the next game. I don't know how long he'll be up. I know I've been told that they're going to burn off this year. So if he, even if he goes back down, he'll play nine games this year. They'll have him. He'll be around. It's too late like, for him to really do anything to save the team, but they're throwing him right to the fire in practice day. He's on a line with Kane and Dylan Strom. So mm. at center. So that'll be interesting. At least one reason to watch. Watching the game last night, which they won 4-2, to two, it felt like watching Lions-Bears. Like that's like it was the ugliest, most pathetic hockey game I've watched in years, and it is what it is. But well, we, someone asked you coming out of the office the other day, they're like, "Chief, Tuesday night, yeah, Hawks money line." I think you said it on Monday morning. You were like, "Yeah, yeah, pound it." Yeah, it was it was for that game for the Columbus game. It was just good. yesterday. It was on our way to the you know five iron, but it was like, yeah, like uh, I I they should beat Columbus and they did, but it was ugly. It and was nice ugly. win over the Knights. Nice win over the Knights, but it's like yeah, I couldn't even like appreciate that because I still had a bad taste in my mouth from the game against the Coyotes. Coyotes. Yeah, that was tough. So it's yeah, it is what it is. They're just not a good team, but I like that they're making changes. They fit right in. Yeah, it's good. All guys, no breaks. Uh, DJ, play that shit. <laughs> <laughs>